It's denim life for Luke Perry, son. Levi's on the Tarzan boy. No bugle boys, just 501s with a slim fit because Levi's sponsored this pay-per-view. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm John Rettham with my review of AEW Full Gear 2021. And what an up and down and all around, come on defense, work pay-per-view this was. I got a lot of notes, so I got a lot of shit to dive into. Let me know your thoughts on this show in the comments, please. I'm going to say I'm going to have some critiques for a few matches. There were a few matches that did go way too long, but I will say, for the most part, this pay-per-view did deliver. It started out great, and it ended great. Cowboy shit, cowboy shit, cowboy shit indeed. So, at the Minneapolis Target Center, and it was snowing outside, baby, it's cold outside. Hey, what's in this drink, baby? It's cold outside. Oh, that song, that's really aged well, hasn't it? It was just about keeping your date safe. Sure it fucking was. But anyway, the crowd was pretty electric, dun, 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 and they were, you know, it was pretty goddamn full. So, obviously, people turned out, they turned up, and we got an AWA legend in the crowd that I was shocked was still alive, because I actually didn't know he was. But anyway, the buy-in Excalibur welcomes us, and then Shivani welcomes Dante Martin, and because he's from uh, Minneapolis, he gets a pop, and then the interruption by the acclaimed. Leo's about to go into his 15th retirement. Now, that's a funny line. Now, Leo Rush, apparently his grandma did pass away, and um, Leo apparently was close to his grandma. I'm not really that familiar with his personal life. It's terrible to lose anybody that you are close with. So, thoughts are with Leo Rush, is terrible, um, I've lost, you know, all my grandparents, lost men early age, I'm glad he got to have some time with her, and I hope that he takes his time to grieve, he will be back on Dynamite very soon, I believe this week, which is good, but hopefully he has had the proper enough time to grieve, as much as possible. So anyway, the Nyla entrance, and then Jamie's theme is a goddamn bop, and Jamie Hayter, sweet fucking Christ, <laughs> Sheeta's out. I won. Hikaru Sheeta to cane me in the face. And who was I cheering for in this match? Thunder Rosa. Naturally, Thunder Rosa. Yes, I love this shirt. I I, I, I live in this shirt. Okay, I don't live in this shirt, but I do love this shirt. Thunder Rosa, my, uh, my favorite wrestler of 2021, easily. Anytime she comes out, big pop. She brings the energy. She brings the passion. And not that the other women in this match didn't. Because this was a well-worked buy-in match, though. I gotta be honest, guys, they could have cut one match off of this show during the pay-per-view or put it on and put it on Dynamite, and I don't think it would have been a miss. And I think it probably would have made the pay-per-view better. Now, they gotta work a little bit better to try and maybe put two women's matches on the pay-per-view and maybe slot a guy's match on the buy-in, but it is what it is. This started the show off hot. Hit and run offense by uh Sheeta and Rosa. And scintillating camera work during this, I do have to say. Vicky Guerrero was at ringside at one point. There was some three. There was a lot of three amigos stuff, and there was a frog splash um, by um, by Nyla Rose, which was very well done, very Art Bar like. Hopefully, just on the frog splash, not like uh, you know Art Bar was in you know his personal life. If you know, you know. Uh, and Rosa does break this up. There was some good flow to this, but I will say that nothing. Uh, there was nothing out of the ordinary here. The ladies killed it. They did some great stuff. It wasn't just. A, a really good women's you know tag match it was just a great tag match in general a perfect way to kick it off and a jackknife roll up most devastating maneuver in all professional wrestling surprise roll up one two three there you go and then shivani's interviewing the best alien friends backstage cassidy and a partner of his choosing taking on the butcher and the blade and he says well since i'm in chaos Maybe I'll uh, bring one of my dogs. Spoiler alert, it's Tomohiro Ishii, who is at a uh, battle uh, in the valley right now as I cut this review. I will be reviewing that likely tomorrow because they had those events. Well, they had battle in the valley on later in the evening, but unfortunately, this event ran way, way long. So I'll probably be reviewing that sometime tomorrow afternoon. So JR um, comes up before the show ends. Just, you know, big pop for him. I will say that I think JR needs some time off. There were times where he had some good lines as far as snark stuff that he was taking the piss out of, and I did enjoy that. And then there were other times, mess ups happen. He's dealing with skin cancer and treatment and stuff like that, and he has his health, other health issues and stuff like that, and he's had a lot of trauma in his life. He is one of the elite, and I don't mean because of all elite wrestling, one of the elite announcers of all fucking time. So many iconic calls. So I'm taking it easy on JR, but it might not hurt for him to take some time off. I think Shivani, Excalibur, Taz, they can make a fine commentary duo. 
or a trio rather. I, I don't think Excalibur's that bad on commentary. Put Shivani as a head guy and just let them do something. Taz could do good as a color cut. You can have, you can rotate the announcers in and out if JR needs to take some time off. So, um, we get, you know, the main show with Pyro, JR, Shivani, Excalibur on commentary. MJF gets serious booze and he shoves Justin Roberts. And if you know, you know why I would like that. Uh, Darby uh, was driving, man, they showed a pre-tape of Darby driving all around. It was like he was a driver for Princess Diana in Paris of 1997. And Darby skateboards to the ring. MJF versus Darby Allen in a pretty good opener. Um, I'm not going to go through every single spot on this or any other match, <clears throat> but I will say the crowd was into it. There was some nice wrestling. Okay, there were some people that thought it was a little too cooperative and a little too interpretive dance, you know, what they did before, but there was some nice stuff. MJF can work. He is obviously better on the mic than Darby, but Darby, he can work. I will say that much. Um, MJF just being a little shit. There was a he he was jaw jacking with a fan, and Darby just launching himself into MJF since he's only like 150 pounds soaking wet. He has to launch himself into people. Coffin drop on the apron because Darby doesn't want to live to see the age of 40. And MJF focuses on the back, just backbreakers and just knocking him and knocking him into the ropes and stuff like that into the corners and. MJF was selling his knee because he would, like, you know, take some impact on his knee. Code Red countered into a powerbomb. Beautiful maneuver. And Scorpion by MJF. Figure four by Darby. Please don't bring Ric Flair in. We get Tombstone on the apron, and he hurt his knee. And then we get more near falls and more stuff and everything. And Code Red uh, delayed, too. I mean, the delayed. There were times where the referee was totally delaying, like, you know, New Japan refs here. Co uh, coffin dropped to the floor. Coffin dropped, countered, and MJF gets his knees up. Sting stops Wardlow and Spears by himself because he is Sting Vincible. And then he's got a skateboard. No, Darby, don't do it. No, Darby. And then it looks like Darby's going to maybe get the victory. He quells his anger. And while the referee's distracted, ring shot. And MJF always said he could beat him with a headlock takeover. He beats him and pins him with a headlock takeover. Well done. Well paced. Very good opening match. Good shit. Uh, Team Taz and Hook are in the skybox. So sky hook box. It's like a sky hook shot. Okay, I'm going to be done with that. I sound like a freaking, you know, pigeon trying to do stuff. Or I sound like Pinky. Hook. Anyway. So, uh, the Mexico U.S. knee pads on FTR were a nice touch. I love their theme. Lucha Bros got a bunch of militia guys or whatever. I don't know what the fuck it was. What it was, was it like any of the militia guys that were, it was the Truth Commission. That's it. Don Callis brought back the Truth Commission. Maybe you could go the same way as the Truth Commission, away from wrestling forever. So they got Pyro, FTR, and Tully versus Lucha Bros with Alex Abrahantes' AEW tag title match. FTR had the AAA, or has the AAA tag titles. And what was this? Well, it was instant fisting action and a whole bunch of stuff with FTR trying to make it make sense. And the Lucha Bros just flying around doing all their acrobatic stuff. Was it dull? No, it was not dull. The Lucha Bros are an acquired taste. I've seen the Lucha Bros live. I met Penta. Very nice guy. Um, I was at the I was at the Seattle uh, indie show where Aubrey got you know got kicked in the face by Phoenix, and we were ready to freaking dive into the ring. You do not mess with our Aubrey, damn it. We are you know great. We 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 take care of our own. So there was just a bunch of stuff. I, I did like the ask him thing, and we what are tags? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. They did do one thing where like, you know, Phoenix got, um, you know, oh, he couldn't get the tag because the referee didn't see it. But often they would just switch out, switch out and whatever. Phoenix just defined physics for no fucking reason. I don't know how he is still able to walk with some of the shit he does. We get a belt shot and a brain buster for two. Near falls of plenty. And then Tully interferes. We get three amigos. Eddie, Eddie, rest in peace, Eddie Guerrero, the anniversary of his death. Fuck, still hits hard. 16 years ago today. Still, still fucking hits hard. I don't think anyone's death hit me harder than Eddie Guerrero's as far as a wrestler. Frog Splash for two. Spy, uh, stuck Pile Driver. And then it gets a bit messy. We get the mask on. They're trying to do the Killer Bee thing. Oh, he's a Killer Bee. But he gets pinned with the Pile Driver one, two, three. But he was the illegal guy. And because the referee didn't know, no way to uh, restart the match. Lucha Bros retain. Miro versus Brian Danielson. World title eliminator finals. Good stuff. This is exactly the type of Miro that we've needed. <clears throat> Miro was using his power and just repeatedly pounding and fisting Brian Danielson. The American Angry Jag Dragon versus the Reamer. This is the word of the Lima. I don't know why I'm trying to make him sound like Bela Lugosi. I apologize. Um, Brian with kicks and chops and Miro was like, his chest was all red. 
Miro had a taped quad. Kevin Nash was like, you call that a quad? Oh, my quad. That was mean. And Miro gloms, and Brian comes back targeting the leg with, you know, some <clears throat> with some good submissions. Uh, everybody do the drag and stomp. The angry dragon drag and stomp. Okay, that didn't work. And if you get that reference, I love you guys. So, uh, counter for the game over. Oh, no, but he gets the game over, but Brian manages to get out of it and get to the label lock. And Judo Gene LaBelle is smiling down from heaven. At least I would have said that, except apparently he's still alive. I didn't know that. I actually, well, I mean, I thought I thought I had seen him on a biography, but I didn't know how old the footage was. He's actually still alive. Good for him. Um, and I want you to kick me as hard as you can. What? Let me tell you about Tyler. No. Uh, we get a DDT. And, my God, you know, Brian targeting the neck, the, the kryptonite of Miro. And he grips Miro's thick neck and head, just jerking down on it. And Miro eventually taps out because eventually when your neck and uh, head get gripped on enough, thick or not, it's going to go limp. You're going you're gonna to finish and you're going to be done. And I thought, oh no, babyface Brian won. Shit, we're in fucking trouble. But we were not in trouble. Well, okay, we were in trouble a little bit later. Um, but Brian, uh, Brian Danielson gained the victory. This was good stuff. They made the best of a bad situation. And, one, and once again, I have to say, like I said in the Dynamite review before, and we should say in the comments, we should make sure that we let John Moxley know that we are with him, his recovery, whatever it takes, however long it takes for him to have his life in order. Whenever he comes back to wrestling, that's secondary. So anyway, why are the Bucks dressed so stupid is what I wrote down. Why is Cutler here? Why is Nakazawa here? This is where I had a problem with it. If you want to have the Bucks and Cole act stupid, fine. But, of course, the Bucks make their entrance, and then it's all about that boom with Adam Cole, baby. Okay, I, I, I don't know why you guys weren't a live audience. And Cole has been marginalized. Totally fucking marginalized. I don't mind having him come in and work with his friend, but I don't know. The pop for Jeng uh, Jungle Boy, who's in jeans. More like Jingle Boy. And Levi Soros, shout out to Rox for that. That that's good. Rox, we gotta do a video together sometime. If you're if you happen to be watching this, we gotta do a video together sometime. We gotta do a review together. I should have worded that differently. Fuck. Please, please don't stop talking to me because I worded that badly. So it's a super clit party. Wow. Ooh, ooh, that would hurt. So anyway, taking on Gene Rassic Cage Press. Working hard on these puns, guys. Please laugh. All right, falls count anywhere. Okay, keep in mind they have a Minneapolis street fight later. Why would you have a falls count anywhere in a Minneapolis street fight on the same goddamn card? Oh, because we're booking this like later WCW pay-per-views or the Attitude Era. Look, I, I I didn't I have liked a couple of the Bucks matches this year. I like Jungle Boy. Luchasaurus is nuts. Christian Cage, he means about as much as a 47 year old guy can with massive concussion issues. And Adam Cole is a terrific athlete. I hated this. I, I, uh, there were some good moments, but I really hated it. It was a mess. It just dissolved into nothing. The long reach around of Luchasaurus. Uh, JR started taking a piss out of this whole goddamn thing. Um, so K there's tables and everything. There's a table elbow drop. Cage and one of the Bucks battle up there or battle in, onto the, you know, onto the concourse. Well, Cage actually gets up on the concourse and dives on him. Nakazawa and Cutler, for what they're worth, nothing. And, oh boy, thumbtacks, in the mouth, and the kiss spot. JR says, oh boy, that's really that's really great. Because he's taking a piss out of it because he's right. Because that's fucking stupid. Too sweet. I don't fucking care if I get, uh, you know, hate for that. Because guess what? You guys can like it. Doesn't mean I fucking have to. That was stu And that's stupid regardless of who does the thumbtack thing. The thumbtacks are stupid. They're not bad here and there. I didn't mind when Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa did them. I didn't even mind when Eddie and Cody did them, when Eddie got signed to AEW. And that Players' Tribune uh, article on him was fucking tremendous. <laughs> My whole point is, the thumbtacks thing are stupid. It's stupid. Putting the thumbtacks in the goddamn mouth, why? And light tubes are really fucking stupid. In fact, deathmatch wrestling aspects are really fucking stupid. So, DDT, botch on the ladder. This went forever. This went way too long. They need to cut this by about five to seven fucking minutes. This should have been... Wild, without going way too long. Uh, low blows everywhere. We get to dive off the stage. By the way, submissions hurt more on the stage. Um, we then get we get a BTE trigger. We get Luchasaurus, you know, doing a choke slam and then doing a shooting star press. He choke slams one guy on there and then does a shooting star press off the stage. 
And then we get a concerto on the one of the bucks. I don't know which one. One, two, three. Okay, I got that one wrong. I thought the Superclete would get the victory, but they did not. Uh, the Gene Rassic uh, Cage Press got it. Gene Rassic Express. They got it. There we go. Let's just get with that. Levi's 501 with denim, denim, denim. Denim, denim, denim. Denim, denim, denim. Junk, 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 junk. Good boy, watch out for that tree. Anyway, Andrade, Andr okay, so it was what it was. Andrade makes his entrance. Malachi gets a pop. Cue the deer gift from Adventure Time. I was told it was from Adventure Time. I've never seen any of Adventure Time. I just love that gift. Where takes off the hoofs and does this. And now I'm going to do this to entice you guys to be disgusted. Pac comes out getting a bastard pop, or bastard pop. That's easy for me. Cody, my fucking goodness, Cody. Fucking turn heel. Just give people a reason to boo you besides being a goddamn idiot with a stupid twat wife. Hey, they had no Bonnie Rhodes or Brandy Steamboat. She basically is Bonnie Steamboat, by the way. She does not, she is not worthy of being on television in the spot she's in because she's not good. At least she wasn't here. And I say the same thing if Brandy was a star and Cody was the goddamn, you know, um, lackey that was uh, writing her code tales, if you will. Fuck you, Cody Chance. A lot of fuck you, Cody Chance. This is the match they should have put on Dynamite. This is where the pay-per-view started to fall in a hole. I already didn't like Falls Count Anywhere match. Um, but can they get along? Who? Both the teams. This was not good. This was not. This was... They're four really good athletes. I will never take away from Cody's ability to do some good stuff in the ring, and Pac's really good. Stop doing the Black Arrow. Pull it out for uh, big matches. Don't pull it out for stuff like this. I had to brutalize or have stuff, because he's taking way too long to get his points. I don't want him to get hurt. He's had ankle injuries. He's had injuries before, but still. Um, at, at one point, Arn Anderson decides to, almost, to pull out the Glock on G.I. Jose, and he runs off. It's A. It's A. -A. This is A.A. -A Jose. Man, that's a, way, that's a weird goddamn thing to go there. And Cody was Cody was injured while Pac was getting uh you know beat up and was just at the guardrail looking and the crowd was starting to chant Cody's sleeping. They don't they don't over they they uh, they don't overuse their fist is what uh, actually was a line here. Uh, Cody's sleeping. That was kind of funny. <clears throat> the crowd was laying into Cody. They were paying more attention to Cody making fun of him than anything else. Reverse suplex off the ropes by Cody. This took for God, they hate Cody, is what I wrote down. Pac did I'd accidentally hit Cody, but can they get along, Black, Black and Cody? Um, they tumble outside and then go into the crowd, because why not? We get a Black Arrow on Andrade, one, two, three. Okay, why? Why wouldn't you have an Andrade Malachi win? I don't know. FTR come down and attack. We're getting this, because FTR is going to help out Andrade. Moving on. Horizon Brazilian Dawn look for Conte. Good look. Actually, I, I, I think it's a good pay-per-view look. And we get guitar puppets on a string because Fozzie is the only uh, band that comes that cheap to play anybody to the ring. It's a Fozzie guitarist. He explains why the fuck I didn't know about it. I thought for a second Nina Strauss hit a goddamn bender. And then I realized that's offensive because Nina Strauss actually has talent. So, Britt's got the golden shower treatment. Probably should have worded that differently. I mean, I'd be pissed, uh, but I guess Adam Cole really is her number one, baby. Ty Conte with, uh, versus Britt with Jamie Hayter and Rebel. Where was Anna Jay is what I wrote down. <clears throat> um, women's title match. Scintillating camera work again during this, by the way. They, there was good wrestling. There was. This wasn't great. This was probably one of the weaker opponents that Britt had. And that's not to say that Ty hasn't accumulated a lot of wins. She's done good stuff on Dynamite and Rampage, but a lot of her wins have come on Dark and Dark Elevation. <laughs> and Ty has improved dramatically. NXT made a major mistake getting rid of her. The problem is, the problem is, Ty's matches kind of all blend together. Everybody has a routine, but I started to notice Ty's matches are a little samey. That being said, Ty earned her spot here, and they tried. They did good wrestling, but there was a lot of interference. Jamie kept, um, you know, interfering behind the referee's back and stuff like that. We get an air raid crash on the apron. Why? Why so many apron? Night of the apron bumps. Not even night of the lepus. And we get a tie KO for two. We get kicks and a gotch pile driver out of nowhere. I guess Suzuki and uh, Ty are going to team up. Is Taizuki? Did that work? Is it like Suzuki Goon? Anyway, 
we get more attacks. We get a stomp on the outside. Second stomp. Lockjaw, but end of the rope. So no, Britt can't, Brit can't quite put her away. Then we get a moonsault missing everybody. I mean, Britt walked away and Jamie, bless Jamie's heart. She tried to, her best to do that. DD tied for two. Lockjaw and, well, we get a roll up eventually. One, two, three. So we get uh, Britt retaining as Britt should have. And it was well wrestled. I just, I wasn't feeling this. It, it was fine. I wasn't, I, I was feeling it more than the, the previous match. I'll say that much. And then Eddie, he got a huge pop. Eddie Kingston, big pop. And again, that Players Tribune um, article, if you have not read it, fucking read it. Eye opening for what Eddie has gone through and still goes through. And credit to Eddie Kingston for being so open. Um, seem more subdued, but he was just focused. CM Shorts, CM Shorts. Now, CM Punk got a, got a pop. But Eddie, he hit the hurricane or the hurricane or the hurricane or whatever. Hurricane! And he hit that and man, he hit the back fist and Punk's out. Graveyard dead. Just done. Absolutely done. But the bell's got a ring and Punk just flips him off and so they got a lot of flipping up. This was a great pro wrestling style fight. It's great stuff. They just beat the shit out of each other. The ending did kind of come out of nowhere, I will say that. There was some great fisting. And I mean that with respect. I mean, who doesn't like to see two guys that are well-traveled veterans fisting each other? I know I do. Always delete your search history. And Eddie was just beating the shit out of him. His hand did get uh, thrown on the steps. That right hand, which, oh my God, no, he's not going to be able to hit the back fist. Punk was bleeding a lot after a spot. I mean, a lot. He got get good. <laughs> um, and then uh, flipping off theater, you know, 3,000. Three Amigos by Punk. He did say this one was for Eddie. We did get a nice second rope superplex by uh, Eddie. Kicks, punch, and clobber in time and everything. But suddenly, even though it seemed like Eddie was going to get the victory, GTS 1, 2, 3, Punk offers his hand. Eddie walks away. Good stuff. No, seriously. Good stuff. I enjoyed this. That's a lot of notes. Let's move on to this. Um, So far, pay-per-view, more good than bad. Then we hit a wall. We hit a literal wall here. One, Baron Von Raschke, he's there. That's fine. AWA legend. Pretty much one of the only ones still alive. Um, they, uh, you know, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, AWA Stronghold, American Wrestling Association. Google it, kids. Um, American Top Team makes an entrance, including Dan Lambert, the sheepish lion Dan Lambert in his tracksuit, and the insurrection god along with the inner circle. I will stop calling Jericho that, and I will stop making fun of Jericho when he addresses the fact that his wife and mother-in-law were part of the fucking insurrection attempts on January 6th. Until he does that, I'm going to continue to make fun of him and also for all the money he donated Trump and all the bullshit. So if you don't like it, go away. I don't fucking care. Five fucking years of this shit and a whole bunch of, you know, him opening his big, dumb, stupid ass mouth and basically showing that he uh, hasn't deserved any of the money he's gotten from Tony Khan. He has laid, you know... Rotten egg after rotten egg after rotten egg, pretty much since he lost the AEW World Championship. And even then, there were starting to be glimmers of, shit, Jericho just has really stupid ideas. Chris Jericho needs to just not be wrestling anymore. This was <coughs> Gar American's, America's top team. American top team. Um, Ethan, I do not get it with Ethan Page. He's a good athlete. I don't get it otherwise. Scorpio Sky, I like. Junior Dos Santos. Uh, Orlovsky. And Dan Lambert, the sheepish lion, Dan Lambert against the inner circle. The, um, you know, J Mr. January 16 themselves, Hager and Jericho with Sammy and Santana Ortiz. This match was shit. This match was dog shit. This match was fucking terrible. Like, why? Why? And here's a question. Okay, the street fight. Why were they wrestling and doing this stuff before they decide, oh, shit, it's a street fight. Let's just go out and do this stuff. You might as well just made this shorter, gone out and just done your weapon stuff, had over in eight minutes, and then it would have been fine. But nope, let's just take up more time. This, pa I know they only do four pay-per-views a year, but seriously, this was fucking ridiculous. This match did, this match, quite frankly, shouldn't have happened anyway. Yes, it was all about getting their hands on the sheepish lion, Dan Lambert. Um, but my goodness, a mess. Junior Dos Santos did do standing moonsault, and then it just got to where everything broke down. There were weapons, there was a hockey stick, there was... um. There was a friggin' Prince sign, because why the fuck wouldn't there be a Prince sign? Purple Rain Chance, I did like that. That was actually pretty good. Um, we get a football, because why wouldn't we? We get a Brave Little Toaster. Um, that would have actually been funny if the toaster had a cape on it. Uh, we get a water ski. We get not. Uh, we get a bunt cake pan. Not the damn bunt cake pan, because Jared's taking the piss out of this, because it's stupid. 
and then we get a ladder, because of course we do. Why wouldn't you get a goddamn ladder? Sammy does a swanton. Thank God Sammy's a great athlete and basically is just a fucking human slinky, because with the way he landed, he probably should have broke every goddamn bone in his lower body, but he didn't. Um, and... And Ethan Page gets in the face of Jake Hager's real doll. Wait, I'm sorry. That's his stupid twat, you know, insurrection supporting wife. Who, boy, I hope their kids grow up to be a lot smarter than them, which won't be that hard because their brains are about the size of chickpeas. Hager and his stupid twat. Why? I don't know her name and I don't fucking care. But anyway, here's uh, Baron Von Raschke. Who does the claw? Would Ethan get arrested for beating up the elderly? Okay, it was a pop. Minneapolis, all that. And then Dos Santos misses his fucking cue when he was trying to do something. I just didn't fucking get it. Um, and Lambert got stapled in the balls, and then Jericho did a frog splash. A tribute to Eddie. Could we switch places? Could uh, Jericho... Anyway. Nope. God damn. Good, good on, good, good on Jericho. Maybe, it, maybe he could talk more about Eddie and do less defending of Chris Benoit. You know, a guy that murdered his wife and child two, on two separate days, and then did what he did because he's a goddamn coward and a goddamn piece of shit and he's burning in hell for it. But Chris Jericho and the inner circle get the victory. Hooray! Nobody asked for this feud. All right. Dynamite plug. So, Butcher and Blade versus Cassidy and Tomohiro Ishii. Uh, Nyla Rose versus Zakaro Shida. And I believe Dante and Leo teaming up against somebody. I didn't catch. Couldn't write it down quick enough. Shivani introduces Jay Lethal. He's all elite. Okay. Rest in peace, Ring of Honor. Um, but everybody's released from their contracts anyway. Um, and he challenges Sammy for the TNT Championship. Sammy comes out and says, you're on. That'll be a good match. I hope Jonathan Gresham gets signed. Because let me tell you right now, Gresham, if you think it's all about... No, no, Gresham is very, very good. And, uh, and I've only seen a little bit of his work. I have seen too many people discount him just because of his height. Gresham could tie people up and everything. He's called the Octopus for a reason. He has a cool masks and all that. Uh, hopefully Gresham gets signed. Hopefully other people get signed. Even though AEW can't sign everybody, they could have working relationships. I mean, they, hell, they could probably buy the ROH TV library or the video library. Maybe Con will. That could be part of the streaming service they may have next year, which hopefully will be on HBO Max here in the States. So, um... Yeah, that was kind of cool that uh, he got that uh, Jay Lethal signed. Now we get to the main event. <clears throat> we get an intro with the Dark Order saying, We got to run here. School's out, school's out. Yay! And we get Hangman Horsey shit. He's on a street that's all closed off because why the fuck wouldn't you do that? It's a pre tape. Huge pop for Hangman. Huge pop. Good shit. Really good cowboy shit. Omega got booze as expected. Um, I mean, people, I think, respect Omega for what he can do as an athlete. When he uh, addresses how he claims he didn't know who Chase and Rance was and stops lying about it and maybe owes up to the fact that he knew who the fuck he was and other people do, then maybe I'll have less of an issue with Kenny Omega. But until then, yeah, great athlete, but kind of chooses friends better. Um, why is Don Scarlet Fever Callus here? Oh, to almost wreck this. Now, I understand what they're trying to do, but here's the thing. One, Don Callis' invisible hands are probably... Oh, all near the uh, women's locker room, which means they should all slap the teetotal shit out of him. Slapped him until their hands, you know, started to uh, uh, redden. Because Don Callis never belonged in wrestling, the piece of shit. But, let's talk about Kenny Omega versus Adam Hangman Page. Cowboy shit, fuck you Don Callis chance, because fuck Don Callis. Fuck the fact that his parents gave birth to him. They're, they should be brought up on criminal charges. So anyway, Heavy chops and Page uh, scared Callis a few times. Probably shit his pants because he's a fucking coward. And, um, Paige, you know, Paige's head wound was open. This was well-paced. This was. This was a pretty damn good match. Was it worth uh, surviving a couple matches that went way too long? Yeah, actually, at the end, it was. Had a couple of those matches been shorter, had this ended at about 8.30, I think it would have been even better. But the crowd was getting up for it. Now, the crowd was exhausted at times. Cowboy kicks. Cowboy kicks. And, um... We had to dive outside a moonsault into the guardrail. Uh, I mean, he hit Omega, but he tumbled into the guardrail. At least he didn't land on his feet, because he has done that and has looked a little too pretty sometimes. And then um, springboard uh, Liger Bomb by Omega. Good stuff, except for the back hangman land on his goddamn neck. I mean, am I blaming Omega for that? It was a stupid move to do, but Omega would not intentionally try to hurt somebody. <laughs> um, Snapdragon on the apron again. Now the fucking apron bumps. V-Trigger. 
And then a roll through out of the one wing angel for two. Tiger driver 98 for two. Diving clothesline um, through the table. I mean, we're actually almost diving elbow clothesline, whatever the fuck it was, but they crashed through part of the table, the ringside table, not crushing Justin Roberts. You know, oh, you're 16, I'll just pretend you said 18. Yeah, not crushing him under there. More in the pity. And Callis was... Uh, oh, by the way, we did get a a buckshot right into the ref because Omega pulled the <laughs> referee in. I don't, remember, I don't remember the referee's name. I'm sorry, it was Paul Turner. I think it might have been. Uh, and Callis has the title, but he, uh, he gets knocked out or gets knocked down. And then, uh, the belt misses dead eye. Aubrey literally sprinting like from out of nowhere. I mean, good. Well, backstage area shows how great an athlete Aubrey is one, two, boo, you know, and then they're getting close. We get, uh, we get the boo. Yay. Boo. Yay. Boo. Yay. One, two, we get a fuck you. You know, we get more flipping off and everything than we got. And like some episodes of The Sopranos, for God's sakes, caught V trigger, but then a clean shot V trigger. Oh no! It's like thump him, bop him, crazy, cool, da 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 da, and a huge lariat. And we get a uh, we get dipshit uh, we get dipshit alert from Shivani because the Bucks are here. What are the Bucks going to do? Because Paige did not want the Bucks to interfere. If they interfered, he was going to make their life a living hell. So we get, uh, we get, you know, backdrop drivers. Ouch. That looked like a lot of draw. Uh, boy, that looked bad. <laughs> the Bucks are at ringside. Are they going to interfere? One wing from Hangman. One, two. No. Omega kicks out. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Because he, he would know that movie. He would know they kick out. Know how to talk. And the Bucks, they do nothing. One buck shot Larry to the back. And Don, being the useless sack of shit that he is, is laying out there. Buck shot. One, two, three, new AEW world champion. I believe that the target center um, roof is orbiting or orbiting the earth as we speak and is probably going to fly into the goddamn sun because of how loud that pop was. New champion, the Dark Order show up. They celebrate. Anna Jay is there to celebrate. Who doesn't love to see Anna Jay on camera? But you know what? Much as I've knocked some of the comedy with the Dark Order and Hangman Page, good stuff. Well done. Seriously, good stuff. Hangman Page is new AEW World Champion. There was a lot of good shit on this. There were some matches that went way too long. I will not, you know, ignore that. But there was a lot of good stuff. Did it make it worth the 50 bucks? Yes, absolutely. And shout out to the various people that interacted with me during the pay-per-view. Thank you guys very much. And let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritland. I'll see you soon.